my name is Fei Yao. Uh, I am chief architect for SAP. I have been working on cloud and cloud native for a long time. Uh, really passionate about using cloud native technology to build uh, highly available, highly scalable and secure application for enterprise. Uh, today with me is Nick. Uh, Nick, you wanna introduce yourself? My name is Nick Nellis. I'm a field engineer at Solo IO. And we've uh, partnered with SAP to help them design and implement their service mesh strategy organization wide. I'm going to hand it back over to Faye to talk about what they're doing with service mesh today and what they're going to be doing in the future. Yeah, uh, SAP as a technology company includes a wider range of verticals uh, from IoT uh, to machine learning, artificial intelligence, from blockchain to big data. Uh, from cloud computing to intelligent cloud uh, and cover a wider range of application and services, uh, which includes ERP, uh, finance and CRMs, spend management, uh, people management, um, and supply chain management, and many, many more. We, uh, uh, we operate over 50 plus uh, data center globally, um, uh, running our workloads across uh, uh, multiple hyperscalers, uh, AWS, uh, GCP, Azure, and uh, Ali Cloud, um, together in our hyper-converged data centers. Uh, we have heterogeneous environments. Uh, it's a hybrid cloud environments. Uh, we use our uh, uh, Kubernetes self service uh, called Garner uh, as open sourced um, Kubernetes service to uh, manage all our Kubernetes workloads. We have over 7,000 uh, clusters, uh, clusters cross globally. Uh, all of those uh, uh, services and application runs on top of uh, business technology platforms, uh, short for uh, BTP, uh, really is to try to bring about intelligent uh, applications uh, with database and data management analytics integration, extension capabilities into one platforms. Uh, that one platform, but for both cloud and uh, hybrid environment, uh, it's a truly make us the best uh, business cloud uh, in the world. There are many live business uh, currently either uh, has been using service uh, mesh already or in a journey of uh, adopting uh, service mesh, uh, uh, such as Concur. Concur has been using uh, service mesh way before it's still. Uh, Concur using Envoy-based proxy uh, to manage their all their workloads. Uh, Ariba uh, is our e-procurement source to pay and a supply chain cloud solution. Uh, Ariba uh, will use uh, service mesh uh, to, uh, to bridge the uh, multi-cloud hyper, uh, hyperscaler clusters uh, to build that uh, source mesh uh, fabric for the uh, interconnectivities. Uh, uh, CSC is another, uh, is our intelligent cloud suites. It has been using Steel for its production workload. Uh, Kima uh, is our open source solutions, uh, extending application with a serverless function and microservices, uh, which is run on top of uh, uh, Garner. Uh, success factor as our fast, you know, faster growing human resource solutions in market. Uh, it is uh, in the journey of adopting, uh, adopting service mesh as well. Uh, the artificial intelligence framework uh, uh, is uh, using service mesh as well. Uh, for example, uh, so uh, search fact, uh, success factors are one of uh, one of the forerunners uh, to uh, uh, try the technologies, try to bring this technology to the bigger organizations. Uh, currently, success factors. Uh, this is the only a small part of it. Uh, the one of uh, their services, microservices, running in the uh, hyperscaler. Uh, and another part of it, uh, machine learning service uh, runs in the virtual machines in our converged cloud environment. Uh, so this is truly um, hy hybrid, uh, hybrid uh, uh, cloud solutions. Uh, right now, uh, there has a lot of complexity components. Uh, we're using uh, console, 
uh, we build a service discovery into the applications, uh, but uh, we want to move more and more of this network uh, related functions such as server discoveries, load balancers out of the application and uh, let engineering teams focus more on um, uh, building features for our customers. And more importantly, uh, for the workloads that are not suitable to run the containerized environment, in this case, uh, be able to join uh, source mesh and the benefits uh, from the uh, you know service mesh um, provides uh, uh, all the benefits that service mesh provides, uh, like uh, containers running in the Kubernetes. Um, AIF is another uh, front runner project which is run in uh, 200 uh, to you know to uh, 200 to 250 workload uh, worker nodes. Uh, it has over 3,000 pods per cluster. It's running the KF serving and the serverless environments. Uh, it is uh, uh, it is using Istio to manage all their traffics internally. Uh, Great, thank you. I think some of the, like you showed off some of the lines of business here at SAP that are using service mesh, but they're using a wide variety of technologies um, to achieve that service mesh uh, solution that they want. Um, can you talk about how business technology platform is getting involved with these lines of business um, in terms of like service mesh yeah. and adoption? Yeah, so you can you can tell uh, various lines of business that and a different stage of uh, either using or adopting service mesh. Uh, as a company, we really want to step back, think about how should we standardize service mesh uh, with various capabilities, including routing and security, et cetera, and really remove the burden for each line of business and build a service mesh uh, as a service. Great, thanks. Uh, you mentioned security. Um, I'm sure as most of our audience has seen and read this, this article from the NSA about zero, adopting a zero trust security model. Um, I'm assuming a SAP has this at top of mind when adopt, you know, and probably a reason why you're adopting service mesh is to, to solve some of those problems. Um, can you go into more detail about like, uh, what is, what SAP is thinking about in terms of security? and what you think about the zero trust security model. On the next slide, um, I think, I know this document talks about pretty much um, from like the hardware all the way up to the software, but we know with service mesh, we're, you know, how SAP is dealing with uh, limiting access to, you know, applications and sensitive data. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, security is paramount in our industry. Uh, the world has changed from trust but verified to never trust, always verified. That assuming breach has happened and uh, bad actors ha has already in your network is essentially the mindset of their trust. Uh, following, you know, DevSecOps and shift left security principles, uh, Service Mesh allows us to um, to build uh, security from the get go uh, without. Uh, the heavy lifting from product engineering teams. Uh, of course, you know, security is uh, always, it should always be later approach um, that uh, there are other aspects of secure app, such as application security, and data security has been taken care of, should be taken care of outside of uh, service mesh. So uh, for SAP uh, at a minimum, uh, we want to use uh, uh, service mesh to enforce uh, zero trust policies. Uh, for example, service-to-service -service communication must enable mutual TLS, um, and end-user authentications uh, must, must be enforced uh, before getting to network, and all workloads must implement non-passable uh, policy enforcement points uh, to, to deploy fine-grained access control policies. Uh, in steel words such as authorization policies has to be in place in all workloads. Last but not least, uh, you know, um, access locks must be enabled uh, for the later uh, forensics um, uh, logging and auditing, et cetera. And uh, uh, a couple of things is, uh, you know, really stand out so fundamentally important. One of the PKIs uh, at uh, SAP, we have our tiered uh, uh, P 
PCA infrastructures. Uh, and then we have our root CA, uh, offline root CA from SAP. Then we have intermediate CAs for various um, landscapes. Uh, one of them is a service mesh. Uh, then we have a tier two uh, uh, CAs uh, to drive the uh, certificate chains, uh, essentially um, uh, issue the certificates to the workloads. Do you want to talk a little bit about why having a really strong PKI infrastructure in place really enables you to um, you know, utilize service mesh to a greater extent? Yeah, I think that most of secure bridges uh, are at exploitation of the old trust model. And uh, without identity, there, there will be no trust. Uh, identity has to be uh, given and uh, you know, or verified and authorized and also tracked. Hence, there is uh, authentication, authorization, and, uh, and auditing. And uh, uh, tools such as uh, you know, uh, Spires can help issuing universal identities and you know, build a trust and a scale. So we've talked about a lot of it, kind of what SAP is doing and architecting in terms of service mesh, but how do you actually plan on delivering service mesh to these lines of business in a unified fashion? That in itself sounds like a pretty tall order. Yeah, absolutely. It involves many, many parts, right? Uh, ideally, uh, you know, at a BDP, we want to offer a, a give a holistic architecture, a technology guidance uh, um, across the whole landscape. And in particular, internally, we have a project called Atom. The goal here is really is, is to, uh, to build a, a mesh, and, mesh and a service uh, to build that dedicated infrastructure layers that can take care of all the network functions uh, for service service communications uh, within the clusters, among clusters, and across clusters, across AZs or uh, geographic boundaries. And uh, if we uh, go uh, one layer deep, uh, this is, uh, of course, uh, the core of the atom uh, is, is really is built around uh, source mesh, and uh, we also uh, ha want to bring the API gateway uh, into this as well to bring traffic uh, north, south, uh, east, west uh, as 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 a whole. Uh, together, provide uh, token services and provide identity uh, certificates uh, to build this as a service. Uh, uh, as a, as manager service provided for our all lines of businesses. If you uh, uh, let's dive one layer deep on this um, typical building block uh, we have uh, as a single clusters uh, all workloads will have ingress and egress. Uh, all workloads will have full observability building to track to have metrics, logins and metrics, and uh, policy can be in, either uh, enforced through uh, uh, is still authorization policy or through external authorization such as OPAs. And uh, we will use our existing uh, PCA infrastructure to, uh, to issue certificates. Uh, so this is a building block for uh, you know, uh, mesh and the services. Uh, from this building block, uh, we have multiple layers of meshes, right? From the very left, uh, is uh, we, can, we can consider it as uh, a single cluster mesh. Then move up to the right, um, depends on the organization structures and the team structures and responsibilities. Uh, there's a need to have uh, multi-cluster meshes. And then move to the layer two, uh, clear to see that uh, even bigger LBs had geographically distributed for multi-clustered environments uh, such as uh, Ariba. Ariba runs in the you know, uh, GCP, also on uh, AWS as well. We need to provide the capability to, <clears throat> to using service mesh to bring those together. And last but not least, uh, we want to uh, we want to view this, uh, view the traffic from north to south, uh, from east to west, 
as uh, as a one network fabrics. In other words, uh, traffic uh, typically before for one level base, we have to go egress outbound in the network, come back to another uh, line of business. Uh, not only has uh, security challenges uh, in terms of compliance, but also uh, uh, increased latencies. We want to use service mesh uh, to be able to uh, bypass that, allow mutual tiers among uh, line of business without going outbound uh, to internet come back. If you look at a little bit deeper on that, uh, what we try to achieve here is uh, uh, one line of business on the left, uh, the traffic uh, workloads, if they intend to reach another workloads for an, uh, into another line of business, doesn't matter its uh, uh, geographic location, it all goes through egress of its own um, mesh and go to uh, SAP managed uh, edge gateway. And uh, those edge gateway will be provisioned through um, uh, Spire, which is a uh, SPIFI uh, uh, implementation with the uh, Federation to provide mutual to us, uh, which provide a universal identity on those line of business and the traffic from one line of business to another line of business, uh, all through mutual to us. So um, we are we are very exciting for the uh, source mesh journey. Uh, definitely still a work in progress. Uh, we are continue uh, looking forward to working with communities and uh, industry leaders. Uh, with that being said, uh, I wanna also thank many technology and engineering leaders uh, and architects for their visions and the continued efforts around a service mesh for SAP. Uh, and with that, uh, I will conclude our talk and uh, thanks for your audience. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. Thank you very much.